Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part two. 10,000 years ago we changed our diet and it was a huge mistake. They just did the first three, which was carbs, well, for the last video, carbs, proteins, fats. Uh, that was, was that macro? And now we're gonna get into micro. Ow. Before we go any further, there's a thanks button on the channel. You can donate, you don't have to. You can subscribe. If this is the type of stuff you like, all my videos. Um, if you don't want to do any of that, just click the thumbs up. That helps me tremendously. Let's get into the video. This is part two. Dietary guidelines recommend that 20 to 35% of your daily calorie intake should come from fats, predominantly unsaturated. So the human body needs carbohydrates, fats, and most of all, proteins to function. But remember, there are the other fuels in the mix, micronutrients. Micronutrients are divided into vitamins and minerals, such as iron, zinc, calcium, and potassium. Vitamins are organic compounds that are essential for bodily functions, such as immune response. Vitamins A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble and are stored in the body if eaten at least somewhat irregularly. Whereas the various B vitamins and vitamin C cannot be stored in large amounts and therefore have to be eaten on a regular basis for efficient brain and body development. Vitamins all play a crucial role and each of them does something for us, whether it's vitamin D for bone health or vitamin A for vision and immune support. But what does this mean for our diets? In trying to figure out what humans need to eat, we should surely be eating the foods that give us a healthy balance of all the vitamins. And a quick side note, notice I said foods, not supplements. Healthy individuals can get all the vitamins and minerals they need from eating food alone. Furthermore, it's generally recommended to get all your vitamins and minerals from food rather than supplements, unless your doctor has recommended to the contrary. Anyway, let's get back to those vitamins. So vitamin A is found primarily in fish oils and dairy products, as well as eggs, spinach, and kale. Vitamin D is a similar story. Look at fatty fish, egg yolks, mushrooms, and red meat. Vitamin E, surprise, surprise, is also found in fish, but it's also present in almonds, sunflower seeds, and pine nuts. Vitamin K is the king of leafy greens. You'll find it in pretty much every dark green plant, broccoli, kale, Swiss chard, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, etc. Vitamin C comes from citrus fruits, blackcurrants, strawberries, and some green vegetables. And finally, there are the various B vitamins. There are eight of them, and they can be mostly found in animal products, meat, cheese, milk, eggs, etc. However, there's one particular vitamin that holds a unique clue in our journey to find out what humans should eat. B12 is a really interesting vitamin because it is the only one that can only be found in significant amounts in animal products. B12 can be found in high amounts in all types of meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. This is because it's uniquely synthesized by bacteria that only live in the guts of animals. There are no plant foods that are significant natural sources of B12. That presents a bit of a problem for people who wish to pursue a meat-free diet, because B12 simply can't be skipped. It is absolutely essential to our development and survival as humans. B12 is needed for red blood cell formation, and a deficiency often leads to anemia. B12 is also crucial for brain development and ongoing brain health, as well as heart health. A lack of B12 has also been linked to an increased risk of depression and anxiety. Although these days many non-animal food products are artificially fortified with B12 to alleviate these issues in those with low or no meat diets. However, B12 is one of the clearest signals we have that, from a purely evolutionary point of view, without any moral consideration or otherwise, that humans should be eating meat and other animal products. So then, we know what our bodies need and we know what we've been eating for millions of years. Can we finally now answer that question, what should humans eat? Well, if I absolutely had to give an answer, it would probably be this. Whatever works for you. 
I think it's really important that we educate ourselves on our biological requirements and make sure we cover all our bases with our diets, avoiding overconsumption of any one food group. But the truth is that everyone is different, not just in beliefs, morals and tastes, but physiologically. The Personalized Nutrition Project was a large-scale study conducted in Israel in 2015, in which the blood sugar levels of 800 participants were tracked after eating. What they discovered is that no one diet fits all. Everyone's bodies respond differently to the same foods. Ice cream may cause one person's blood sugar to spike, but the same ice cream could have no significant effect on another individual. This is important to note because elevated blood sugar levels have long been linked to weight gain, heart disease, and diabetes. Interestingly, they also found that how people's blood sugar levels reacted depended largely on the health of their gut microbiome. Those with healthy levels of good gut bacteria could better tolerate high sugar foods. But that's a topic for another day. The Personalized Nutrition Project is just one study within a new and emerging field of science called nutrigenomics. Nutrigenomics aims to discover exactly why people react differently to different foods and diets. It explores how the presence of specific gene mutations in some people affects what they should be optimally eating. Nutrigenomic research is quite new and a little patchy, but it has already identified genetic variants, such as the MTHFR mutes folate metabolism and has implications for cardiovascular health and pregnancy. They've also found a gene that determines how well or how poorly caffeine works on you. It's called CYP1A2. If caffeine doesn't give you a perk like most other people, you probably have the fast metabolizing version of this gene. Yeah, coffee doesn't really spike me so much. I know some people who who are, uh, you know, they'll take energy drinks and stuff like that, or they do coffee. It doesn't work for me like that. I don't really drink coffee in the morning. Uh, Saturdays and Sundays I do. But I don't drink coffee in the morning, I drink water. Now I'm on iced tea kick. By analyzing these various genetic markers, and many more we've yet to discover, Nutrigenomics aims to personalize nutrition advice, moving beyond a one-size-fits-all dietary recommendation to create bespoke diets that cater to individual genetic profiles. Just imagine sending off your blood to some Silicon Valley company only to get the results in an app, telling you exactly how certain foods affect you personally and offering a DNA-specific diet. After having said all this, I'm not comfortable leaving the answer to what should humans eat on whatever you fancy. Although it's true to a large extent, it feels rather unscientific, especially after everything we've learned in this video. So if I absolutely had to give an answer just based on my research, then I suppose I'd have to ask the question, when were humans at our healthiest? If we look at the timeline of our existence, when could we pinpoint the epoch of optimal nutrition for humankind? To answer this, we first need to completely disregard lifespan as a factor. Average lifespans in developed countries have almost doubled in the past 100 years, but that has been driven primarily by medical advancements and a better understanding of general health, not by diet. Well, thankfully for me, a huge amount of research has already been put into answering the question of when was optimal human nutrition. And although there is still ongoing debate and probably always will be, the overwhelming consensus amongst researchers, scientists and dietitians is that we were at our healthiest when we were hunter-gatherers, also known as the Paleolithic era, which roughly spanned 2.5 million years ago to 10,000 years ago, just before the advent of agriculture, when we basically f***ed everything up. Some researchers suggest that as hunter-gatherers, our diets were the most in line with our evolutionary adaptations as they ever have been. That is to say, in every way our body had evolved to desire, process and accept foods and nutrients, during the Paleolithic era, we were meeting those goals. 
and we also didn't eat anything at that time that was particularly difficult for our bodies to process because grain and processed foods didn't exist yet. Our diets consisted mostly of lean meats, fish, eggs, nuts, seeds, fruits, and vegetables. This is why there are so many modern day proponents of the paleo diet, which advocates eating those exact things and avoiding modern conveniences such as wheat and any foods with refined sugar such as sweets, soft drinks, etc. It sounds simple and that's because it is. Although I don't particularly like the term paleo diet because it's not a diet at all. It's just a mode of eating akin to that which we've evolved to do so over millions of years. And it seems to be working. There are early indications that the paleo diet has shown reductions in chronic diseases by those who follow it. But I would argue that there's a slightly healthier diet out there. And a lifestyle that better suits our tastes as modern humans, which still provides all the benefits of the paleo diet and a little more. So, ultimately, if I had to answer the question, what are humans meant to eat? This diet would be my answer, my final answer. And please note, this is just my personal opinion that I've derived based on the research I've done. Ask anyone else and they could answer differently. Now, some of you might have already guessed what I'm about to say. Yeah, it's the Mediterranean diet. Yes, yes, I know you've heard all about it time and time again, but it turns out there are a hundred good reasons for that. You see, the paleo diet may be pretty great and all, but humans are ultimately creatures of habit and we're extremely susceptible to temptation. And that's a bit of a problem because the paleo diet is really very limiting. Namely, it cuts out two of modern humanity's greatest inventions, wheat and cheese. The paleo diet forbids the consumption of dairy and anything made from grain, like breads and pastries. Last time I checked, those were all the delicious things because those are post-agricultural inventions and they were not eaten by hunter-gatherers. But the Mediterranean diet has managed to magically fuse the best elements of the paleo diet with the wonders of agriculture in a beautiful blend of good food and world-leading health. The Mediterranean diet, which is primarily the diet of Italy, Greece and Spain, just like the paleo diet, champions the consumption of whole foods in their natural, unadulterated, unprocessed state. However, the Mediterranean diet expands the culinary palate of paleo with the addition of whole grains, legumes and dairy products, particularly fermented ones like cheese and yogurt, which are great for your gut health. These additions not I have a little uh, all-in-one cooker. I'll make my own yogurt and uh, make the yogurt then I'll put it in a jar and I'll throw in some oatmeal um, uncooked just regular oatmeal some like a handful of that a handful of uh, frozen blueberries um, some frozen strawberries and then sometimes I'll even take like a banana and I'll cut that up and throw that in there and then put it in the refrigerator come back the next morning where it's kind of thawed the banana clearly didn't but mix it all up the oatmeal's gotten soft and it's absorbed some moisture um, if it's really really cold uh, like or frozen like blueberries or whatever it'll cause the oatmeal to or the um, yogurt to kind of harden up a little bit like get a little frozen oh it's so good oh it's so good only provide a wider variety of flavors and textures but also bring in essential nutrients that might be less abundant in a strict paleo diet for example whole grains and legumes are excellent sources of dietary fiber b vitamins and minerals like iron and magnesium and sourdough bread and dairy products, both of which are extremely common in the med, but completely excluded from the paleo, are fantastic probiotics, which improve the health of your gut microbiome. Something which is increasingly proving to be one of the pillars of overall good health. Probably the hallmark of the Mediterranean diet is its emphasis on healthy fats. Olive oil and fish are pretty much eaten daily. 
we get monounsaturated fats from olive oil and polyunsaturated fats and omega-3 from fatty fish. These fats are not only heart healthy, but also aid the absorption of fat soluble vitamins, enhancing the nutritional value of all other food consumed. Furthermore, the Mediterraneans famously love their red wine, drinking it almost daily. Red wine is packed with a phenol called resveratrol, which increases good cholesterol levels and has a neuroprotective effect, shielding the brain from degeneration. But for me, the biggest benefit to living by the Mediterranean diet is that it tastes fucking amazing and it's simply a joy to eat. And most of all, apart from avoiding processed foods, it's pretty much unrestricted. I'm a big believer that any restrictive diet we place upon ourselves ultimately degrades our enjoyment of food and makes it harder to stick to said diet. And the results speak for themselves. As of 2023, Italy and Spain are both ranked in the top 10 worldwide for life expectancy. And the Italian island of Sardinia is one of only five blue zones in the world, regions where people regularly live to over 100. In conclusion, there is no one size fits all answer to what should humans eat. A diet that includes a variety of whole foods, is rich in fruits, vegetables, healthy fats and proteins, and is adaptable to individual needs and preferences, seems to be the closest we can get to a so-called optimal human diet. But remember, what's optimal for one person might not work for you. And ultimately, all you can do is inform yourself about how what you eat affects your body, and then eat whatever you think will make you happy and healthy. So to wrap things up, if I really had to answer the question, what are humans meant to eat? I would say this. The same damn thing we've been eating for thousands if not millions of years. And it's my hope that this video has given you a brief overview as to what that might be. After all, it's worked pretty bloody well for us up to this point. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Just a quick word to say that I couldn't make these videos without the support of my Patreon members. Cons okay. I've, you know, the Mediterranean diet I've heard about, but it's just, it's difficult to get a lot of things here because it's just so much of the bad stuff. And I'm guilty of that because I love the bad stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I guess uh, when your parents go, it kind of tells you that you need to do a little better. But I, I do eat healthy, just not. 100% of the time. But it's not about that. So, we're going to end this here. I hope you learned something, because I certainly did. And uh, I'll have to focus on uh, eating a little better with the Mediterranean diet. Or eating the Mediterranean way. How about, we'll just say it that way. So, until next time, have a good day, have a good night.